Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, we discuss what it means to be an entrepreneur. By definition, an entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses, taking on greater than normal financial risk in order to do so. Big or small, a vast majority of entrepreneurs will take on some sort of financial risk starting a business. And nobody starts a business to lose money, so planning accordingly is key. In fact, we have discussed scaling a brand in earlier episodes, but in today's episode, we interview an entrepreneur with innovative ideas that do not have huge financial risk, yet still entrepreneurial and super innovative. And that's why we are here. I want to share innovative ideas to help spur the entrepreneur in all of you. I recently read of an entrepreneur buying generic water bottles on Alibaba at $1.98 and selling them on Etsy for $14.99. Let us assume 500 units are sold, minus $500 for shipping, which will give us roughly $7 of profit per unit after Etsy fees. That's over $3,500. This story is nothing new. The owner of Patron Tequila was once homeless. Bloom Nation's founder won his startup money playing poker. And there are other well-known companies like Facebook and Amazon that come to mind when you think of rad to riches stories. However, one founding principle in all of these stories is their work ethic, determination, and innovation. In my experience this far, entrepreneurship tends to attract people with unique minds and strong personalities, and that can make for a lot of interesting stories and opportunities to learn from. Today's episode is an opportunity to learn that business idea can come from anywhere, and exploring even the most uncommon industry markets can have monumental upsides. This podcast was edited by Modern Ally, the business for small businesses and nonprofits who want their graphic design, marketing, social media, video, and other media projects done right. Modern Ally has a passion for supporting community education and social rights. The best part, Modern Ally meets businesses where they're at and works to create custom packages and services that fit your business needs at your budget. Say goodbye to overpriced, impersonal, and out-of-touch agencies and say hello to your newest ally. To get started, visit yourmodernally.com or you can follow Modern Ally on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next guest entrepreneurial background spans from graphic design, blogs, podcasts, and fashion boutiques. He is the current owner of a digital video game photography company. Please welcome the founder of XYX, Tony Stephen Wallace. X, here to talk about video game photography. This is very interesting. I'm excited about this one. First, X, let's hear about you. Tell me. Give me a bio. Let the people know who you are. Uh, Yeah, my name is Tony Wallace. People call me X because I legally changed my name to X Tony X uh, when I was 18. It's true. So I had to get a new birth certificate and the whole thing. From there, a little bit of Bible college, a little bit of art school. Got hired with a ragtag group of uh, video producers when I was in my early 20s. Camp Grizzly, where I still work. We're now a full-fledged advertising agency. Started there doing 3D art, then became a video editor, and then a commercial video director, and now I'm a senior art director over there. Nice. But that's not all you do. Correct. You, you do all kinds of things. Man, you do a lot of little side gigs, man. <laughs> I'd be checking you out. So let's let's talk about what is video game photography. I think it sounds pretty straightforward, but I want to hear it from your perspective. Yeah, it is what it sounds like, right? It's taking photographs inside of video games, something that only recently I think is compelling in the sense that just hardware right just future technology video games getting more and more realistic definitely things are looking cooler there's some sort of compelling photography to be had in games now are specifically making photography modes so where it's actually like controlling a real camera so you can stop the game you'd have all the same sort of settings and controls you'd be used to taking real photographs is that kind of how the idea originated Hmm. Yeah, totally. I think uh, a lot of it was 
because COVID, I've been an avid photographer and just creative and visual creative for a long time in all sorts of different mediums. So yeah, when Cyberpunk came out, it was just fun to sit at home and just get lost in the game and versus playing the game. Instead, just walking around the cities and taking street photography like I would when I was really like out taking real street photography in different cities I used to get to travel to all the time. That would always be my extra thing on jobs. Any off time, I'd be out there taking street photos and just really into photography. So when the pandemic hit, being able to get lost that same way in a video game was uh, very compelling to me. Nice. Now, do you have like, you know, individuals that reach out to you and say, hey, can you take my character photo? It would have to be a certain type of game to allow that to happen. I don't think the technology is there just yet. I think we're really at the very beginning stages of video game photography. Okay. Really with Cyberpunk and a few other games where they're specifically trying to make these things happen. Yeah, I don't know it's quite there yet, but I can see it getting there, right? That's pretty cool. That's a cool idea. Yeah. Now, one of the things I've, you know, NFTs, right? Becoming big, non-fungal. <laughs> Non-fungible. Yeah. Yes. Does, <laughs> do, you, do you envision, uh, you know, Video game photography kind of get into that area at some point? You know, I think it definitely could. In general, I think I see video game photography more as like um, almost like an influencer play. Like, I think that's the only way it would become a thing. It could be like, yeah, you could definitely sell your video game photography as NFT, but you could also sell a picture of you doing the peace sign as NFT. So yeah, totally. it doesn't unless you're really, really super established, famous artist. I don't think NFTs are would work like that for video game photography. Okay. But I could see it like any art, right? Like, sure. If this did become a thing, I think it's very new. It's um, unique. It's just starting out as more and more people take video game pictures. Then, yeah, you could see some like famous video game photographer being able to sell the NFTs for sure. For sure. Where, where do you see actually video game photography in like five, 10 years? I think like photography. There's no reason why it wouldn't end up the same as photography. As the games get better, as the developers cater around it you know even with my cyberpunk photos i would have a lot of people hit me up and be like oh damn like you're traveling during the pandemic and i was like no bro this is a picture i took in a video game you know so it's like why wouldn't it get just like photography in the sense of you're still using all the same skills it's still your 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 unique eye how you frame things how you use the camera I thought it was really encouraging. I thought it was unique as I started taking video game pictures. All my old creative friends from video directing and just agency world and all my creative professional friends hit me up a lot. Like, yo, this is so cool to see your eye in video games. So like translated the same as real photography. They're like, oh, X is taking photos again. Like they could see they were my style of photography, even in a video game. So I could absolutely see it just being like normal photography to be honest how do you how do you envision like in the future monetizing it i think now like i couldn't see it like the traditional photography route where you're selling prints or you're doing a show or whatever but i really think it's more of an influencer model right so i don't monetize it for me it is just since i do work in the advertising world like all my side hustles are kind of right now just for fun and if something comes out of it monetarily that's cool but I know how you would monetize it. And uh, how what you would do is you would just play the influencer game. So hashtags, tagging, all that stuff. And you would get money by companies reaching out for you to promote their game. If you're one of the top video game photographers and everyone loves your cyberpunk photos or Ghost of Mishura photos, companies eventually would reach out to you and be like, hey, can you, we'll pay you X amount of dollars to keep posting and tagging our game. We'll make articles of it, put it onto the blogs, et cetera, et cetera. So right now it's just the normal influencer model is how you would monetize video game photography. Okay. So let's, let's take a little step back because I think a lot of the time what we've been talking about is your creativity, right? Very creative, doing a lot of different things. Where did that come from? Where did your creativity come from? Different cultures we're into, right? So growing up, obviously we grew up together, similar age, like before the internet, maybe you ran across a thing a skate video, a magazine, a record. And just, I got caught up early into like punk scene and skater scenes and that kind of alternative lifestyle. And just was always just part of that lifestyle. And creativity is a big part of that, right? Like from album covers to skate deck designs, to streetwear, to all that stuff. It started real young, just getting into kind of the alt culture. You know, I had a band in high school too. No one else did like just, I don't know. I think I just latched on a little bit. Also, just like a, a alt kid. I don't mean to present it like that because I also like played sports and was a dumb jock and all that shit as well. <laughs> 
But I did just latch on to the creative lifestyle and it was like, uh, felt very different for where I lived and the people around me at the time. Yeah. So one of the things you mentioned too, is you work for Camp Gridley. So you do videography, right? How has that experience helped you kind of move forward with your video game photography? Oh yeah. They're hand in hand for sure. Like I think all the things have been hand in hand that I, even my career creativity, like I mentioned earlier in the little intro, I went to school to be a 3d designer. So making 3d models and stuff. And that got me in the door at Camp Grizzly when it was just six of us. And then that skill turned into editing videos. That skill turned into directing videos, turned into making TV commercials for all the biggest brands in the world and getting to do a bunch of cool stuff. So I think they definitely go hand in hand for sure. Nice. What what do you uh what do you enjoy most about either one of them? Video game photography is fun cuz it's at your house, so it's like playing video games. <laughs> so it's easy and you just get lost in it, right? Uh it's also nice. These games are so realistic now. Or if I'm shooting street photos in a game, it's nice not to have real people yelling at you or, hey, get out of the way or don't take my picture or just having to interact with real people. That's super fun. And then on the work side of things, it's super fun to get to be creative with a lot on the line. And I, I like that a lot. It's it's a whole different way of creativity where video game photography or anything I do outside of work is just to be purely creative and have fun. And which is funny, I think that I'm still creative in my off time and I'm also creative at work, but at work it's different because there's so much on the line and it's funner. It almost feels like you're like in Mad Men or something like that. Nice. Nice. Now you guys grown pretty large. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. how do you start uh, with that team? Yeah. So I was working at the Apple store when I was in college. I went to the art Institute. So I definitely always was trying to be like a graphic designer or something at the time. Did everything I could to try to be a creative professional back then. I worked full time, 40 hours a week, went to college full time and then all my spare time, I just made videos or did designs for bands or whatever. And just like that really was my early 20s was nonstop grinding, trying to somehow get into the be a creative professional. I met a dude at the Apple store, uh, Dan Portrait, who owns Camp Grizzly. One of the people I worked with was an intern there. And then he invited me over and we'd hang out at Camp Grizzly. It was just five people back then. So I'd go there on Saturdays and just like play Gears of War and hang out with the people. Eventually got a chance to be there part time and then got in that way. So then it was just six of us. I was the second person hired that wasn't one of their friends. So it was just all just a friend group from U of O. And they did video production. And from video production, just do little stuff like little standard TV and appliance commercials, stuff like that. And then from there, we became a really big production company doing national broadcast TV spots for Adidas. Mostly was our hugest client. And then from there, they became a full-fledged creative agency, which they are now. And it's, so it went from like the six of us to now it could be anywhere over a hundred and some people with a whole bunch of different kinds of jobs. So yeah, it was a quite the evolution for sure. Nice. You know, one of the things I like to do is like, you know, educate the people that are listening. So, you know, looking back on it, what is something like you wish you would have known kind of going into all of this? I think in general, do things quicker. It's so easy to be scared to do stuff. Uh, one of my, like I have a neck tattoo of a grizzly bear for Camp Grizzly and it says never forever. I think once I learned that, which is like obviously life's not forever, it made me quicker to take chances. And I'm still horrible at this. I don't want to say, like, oh, now I've learned to take chances and I'm doing everything I want. I remember being two years in the job and thinking, 26, finally I'm a creative professional, blah, 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 congratulations. But I had a chip on my shoulder still thinking, like, I could have done this six years ago. Like, easy. I just could have. Like, you just think you can't. And thank God I worked retail all the way until I got that job because retail really makes you hate your situation so much that you have to do something. Like, once I met the millionth idiot asking these dumb questions who had a job that I wanted, that's when I was finally like, I could do this. Like, why now finally just do it, idiot, even though you're almost 30 now or whatever. So, yeah, I would say do it quicker. Like, you could always just do it. Like, you, why not you? You're just as good as anyone else. Anyone is. Yeah. I think that about the kids that come in intern for camp and stuff now, it's just like to have a little belief in yourself and take you that risk is worth it. And you'll always have to take a risk as well. Like, that's the thing that's hard. For a lot of people who wish are thinking, oh, I love to do what you're doing, love what you're doing. You still will need to take a risk, right? So when I'm at school full time, working full time and have a mortgage and I'm married, I still had to take that risk of quitting that awesome full time job. Make, I don't know, less than half of what I was making in this great full time job where I had a great position to take that risk to be part of that industry. Yeah, I guess I meant to say I would do it sooner. You know, that's that's actually a great point of risk because 
that's a big thing for the entrepreneurs, right? Yeah. Is how to manage. Essentially, as an entrepreneur, your your job is to mitigate your risk. What what kind of things did you think about when you were deciding to move forward? And and you know, how did you calculate your risk? Yeah, you know, there was a little bit of that actually. I remember thinking like, okay, I just need to save up enough money for. I was like, I should save up for three months, like just whatever I'm making now, save up for three months quit, give yourself three months to do it and see what happens. And that was kind of trying to mitigate the risk. But really, again, just the retail lifestyle. I didn't think about it very business wise. I was also pretty young. You know, circle back around because I really kind of want to let the viewer or listeners at home know like the editing process that you go through for video game photography. Is there an editing process? What what do you have to do? Yeah. So right now it's really just cyberpunk is the easiest one because it has a legit photo mode. Pretty simple. You know, I'll walk around only not to play the game, just to look for photos dorky kind of but like even though i'm just sitting on the street in cyberpunk so i'll look i'll see a frame i like you could change the time of day in the game which is nice too so i always make sure it's like the perfect light and i'll just imagine like what if there was a person here and i'll just sit and wait for that person to come oh nice because it's like a city right so there's mm-hmm. people walking and tons of people across but they're not wearing a cool enough outfit or whatever and then i'll take it or i'll see someone around town with a cool outfit and i'll follow them and wait to get them in a good spot and then from there, so screen cap, well, not screen cap, they save it, actual real files. Cyberpunk will save the files, then I bring it to Lightroom and I crop it for Instagram. And then I have like my own little color treatment that I do to have a preset that I've made for that game specifically. And I'll put in the presets and then upload to Google Drive and then from Google Drive to my phone, to my phone. to Instagram. You know, I wanted it to be said because I think there's a big misconception of photography is pretty simple. <laughs> right? you, you kind of take a I mean, photo. That's hard and, it is. <laughs> right. But <laughs> it seems like most of the time is spent editing. I would say half and half. And any photographer will tell you this, even just traditional photography. Yeah, I mean, half of it is the shoot and half of it is editing. My editing process goes quick for video games because it's, I have a preset I like. I know how I want it to look. It's not like for a job, right? Where you'd have to like Photoshop out certain logos or do this. And the client wants a certain this, that, the other thing. So I do spend a lot of time waiting to get the photos in game. But then mostly the editing process is actually just choosing what photos, right? So from... I'd say every session, if I have 150 photos, five of them go to Instagram. So really, it's just like choosing the right five of the hundred. Is it worth posting? Is it saying something? Is it different than the last things you've done? Like nice. not necessarily the like colors and stuff. So what what advice would you give uh, an individual trying to get into a video game photography? Get a good computer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is one of those things. It's almost like an Olympic sport or something where there's such a barrier to entry because your photos are only as good as the graphics. So if you don't have a really good computer, it's not going to look so good. Not to say you can't do something different, like more stylized, maybe black and white. Actually, I take that back. I would say just start taking photos in games if you want to do it. Like, why not? Like, get lost in the game. The game means something to you. Go back, play it again, but only for the sake of taking photographs. I think in general, photography reminds us of things and brings back emotions and Video games are very good at doing that. You know, a lot of these games are 30 to 40 hours experiences and they last with you longer than a movie, longer than a television show. You'll never forget or something like that. And just the emotions you have tied to them. So if you could play it all over again and snapshot those moments you remember in your head of a video game and be able to keep it as a memory, like that's why it's worth doing it. Nice. Well, you know, I got to ask you, what's your favorite game? <laughs> Actually, pretty simple for me. I um, generally have a rotating cast of single player games, but I... Uh, I'm a competitive video game player like most people are these days. So I just play um, Apex Legends, Overwatch, and Valorant with the homies. Uh, so all PvP shooters games. And then Street Fighter. So I've been playing Street Fighter for nine years now. So that's probably my most proficient game. It's Street Fighter Five now is the game. Um, but yeah, all competitive games. And then I'll randomly do a one-player game, which is funny about the video game photography because the majority of the games I play, I don't take photos of because I just play them to play games and compete and have fun with my friends. So really when I play a game like Cyberpunk or games I'm taking photos of, like Titanfall, I just took a few photos in there. It is for the expressed interest of taking photos and kind of being lost in a world versus having to be hyper competitive. What is your favorite game to take photos in? Uh, Cyberpunk for sure. Well, I guess it's a lot of my aesthetic. I love it. It's like New York meets Tokyo and it's just the quality is insane. I mean, it's the game that you know, breaking everyone's computers and got pulled from the PlayStation store because PlayStation's going to handle it, et cetera. So it's just, it's so close to real life. Like, I'm not joking when I said I've had multiple people hit me up during the pandemic thinking I was traveling, taking pictures in that game. They look so realistic. It's incredible. Nice. Well, let's let the listeners at home know how to 
getting a hold of you, how they can follow you on Instagram. What are your handles so they look at your video game photography? Yeah, just Instagram really, and it's X Kawaii West X. Uh, it's spelled X K A W A I I W E S T X. So that's just a little play on Kanye West. And I like it. <laughs> anime. Now looking back on everything. Would you do anything different? I guess besides doing it quicker. No, I don't know if I would. It's hard. I, yeah, I guess I would just be more and still. I think the same thing I would do different back then is the same thing I wish I would do different now, which is always just have a little more self-confidence and be willing to do things faster and not feel so like, oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Or it'll happen for me. I do think a lot of times I just sit and wait talking to all these entrepreneurs, which is crazy that I'm here. I'm not one. They are go-getters, right? And eventually, you know, I've made those steps to do those things, but not as often as I would like to. So same advice I gave myself back then, I would give myself today. Nice. Thank you, X, for joining me. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.